Welcome back to Prompt Circle, where we discuss AI use cases that empower your business workflows. I am starting a new series related to building AI applications using no-code or low-code tools on Slack. In today's video, we'll be looking at how to use Zapier to build a Slack chat GPT application. All right, so let's take a look at um, how this application actually works. Um, essentially, the, the application just works by simply, um, you know, sending it a message uh, within a specific channel. Uh, the application is going to listen for those messages, and once it receives um, it receives a prompt, it's going to provide a response just the same way ChatGPT would, but right within your Slack application. Now, the cool thing about this is that the application is actually going to respond to you in thread. So let's say I ask the question like, you know, what is the most um, populated city in Canada? Um, when I ask that question, it's going to trigger a zap behind the scenes. Uh, that zap is going to communicate with OpenAI and then send me a response back. So here it says most populated city in Canada is Toronto and it provides me, you know, with actually the the, the population detail as well. Now, the cool thing is that where, whenever I, I send a message, even when I actually try to reply, you know, and I can say, you know, what is the square size of Toronto and and that's also going to get me a response back all right so now let's take a look at how to build it out all right so let's go ahead and actually build out our application now just to kind of recap what our application is going to be doing um, essentially whenever we receive a message on our application we're going to go to uh, pass that message as a prompt into um, open ai's chat gpt model so that could be 3.5 or uh, gpt4 and we're going to get that response back and send it back into the channel as a threaded response. So that's what our application is going to be doing. So let's go ahead and start creating the zap here. So we'll go ahead and click on new zap. Now, I just noticed that um, Zapier has really launched this really cool feature. It's in beta, which allows you to define what you want to create in terms of automation. It's a pretty cool feature, but I'm going to use the actual configuration. I'm going to make a video about how to use this and test it out. I haven't actually spent a lot of time testing it out, so um, I will provide you with more information once I have a chance to do that. So the very first place our application is getting triggered from is from slack because that's where we're receiving our initial message so the event we're going to be using here is when a new message is posted to a channel so we want to select that so whenever a new message is posted to a channel this is what's going to trigger our zap now you can go ahead and choose a channel um, an account here if you have already connected your slack app to zapier if not you can always go to connect a new account and that would take you through the flow of connecting your own slack account so I'm going to choose Prompt Circle Learn um, as my channel, as my account, and I'm going to hit con the Continue button. Now, the next thing the trigger needs is which channel is this message going to be sent into. So in my case, I have actually gone ahead and created a channel in Slack called Chat GPT Channel, and that is a channel which I want to listen for every message that is posted into that channel. I want to receive that message and I want to provide a response. Now, the next question is a really important question, trigger for bot messages. So you want to say no to this. So this means that whenever the bot responds, you don't want your zap to continue to kind of refire as a result of that. It should only be based on human typed messages. So this is very, very important. So setting this to no would prevent bot messages from triggering um, this particular zap. So I think we're done with that and that's actually how easy it is to actually go ahead and um, create a zap and now we can test it out and we can see that it does return a response. So it's looking at maybe a past event here and returning to as an example. So all of this information is what we're going to have access to when we start um, actually um, building out our application. So the next one is the action. So we receive the message. Now we want to go to ChatGPT, so we want to use OpenAI's ChatGPT to process the, the message that we've received and then return a response. 
So right here, you can go into events and you want to create a conversation. So now if you haven't already kind of um, installed uh, ChatGPT or connected ChatGPT, if you, it will indicate that you need to do that and you may need to add your API key. So let's go ahead and do that. So in this case, I'm choosing an account. So in my case, I already have an account here, ChatGPT. So I'm going to select my own existing account. If you don't have an account, you can always add an account. All right. So what is going to be the user message? So the user message is something that is basically the message that is received from the user. So the prompt. So you can find that message inside the payload by going into the raw text right so this is the raw text and this is the message that we're going to be receiving so that's the message we want to pass in right so whenever we receive the user message user message is basically the message that is coming from the person who's asking a question now the username we're just going to leave it at user um assistant's name um you can okay so we can say username actually let's just put a username here so username is this so we're going to put username as this um and then assistant name can be anything you want so you can always sort of choose any name you want but for now i'm just going to leave it as assistant and then the assistant instructions this is really important this is a very very key aspect of building out anything whenever you're using gpt 3.5 um or you're using gpt 4. these um system messages um essentially provide the chatbot with a persona and instructions on how it should behave so for now we're just saying it's a helpful assistant so which is fine uh, and we're here we're using gpt 3.5 but of course you can also select gpt 4. in my case i do have access to gpt 4 so i'm just going to select gpt 4 because i i think gpt 4 obviously provides really awesome responses and in terms of a memory key now this is pretty awesome because this means that this can really act as a chatbot so you can pass it um, some memory information so that could be information that is coming from you know your messages um, maybe from a thread or something of that nature you can bring all of that information and pass it here as a memory information that it can use so if provided this unique value would allow the system to continue a conversation from the previous messages use something that wouldn't change um, like a user's email address or something like that so you can basically you know get information about this particular user and then and, and basically use that to continue the conversation with that person so once we, we finish this we want to continue and we want to test the action just to make sure that our apis um, that the application is firing as accordingly and is connecting to chat gpt so let's go ahead and test that and see okay so it seems like our test uh was correct it worked out fine um and then there's a response um so this response is what we're going to be passing in the response that we we um, create so and it also provides us with information like the tokens used and things of that nature so the next up we need to go ahead and actually create um, a response so we need another action that provides the response right so when we receive the message we've passed it to chat gpt we now need to respond with that message um, so we need to send a channel message right and in that channel message that we're sending we need to pass the actual channel so this would be whatever channel triggered the message so we go in here and we have to select the channel id so that's the channel where the message was being passed the message we want to send is going to be a message that's coming back from ChatGPT. so it's going to be the content that is coming back from ChatGPT. so we need to look for um, the content and provide that so assistant response message is what we're going to be pulling in there and once we kind of put that in there um send as a bot we want to say leave it to yes you can always change the bot name if you want for now i'm just going to leave it at zapier and i'm not going to add a bot icon as well i'm just going to leave it as is you can also add things like you know links or it you know include like a link to the zap 
um, that generated the content, which we're going to see when we, we respond to our messages. And there are a few other things that are important. So if you want to schedule a response rather than sending it immediately, you can do that as well. You can also insert a file as a response as well. So, so many really cool things you can do here. Now, in terms of a thread, if you want to thread the response, how would you do that? Well, to thread the response, you need to use the thread ID. Uh, and the thread ID is typically the TS. It's called TS. So this is the thread um, which basically provides you with a place to go respond to the message. So when a message comes in, we're not just sending a message, we're just threading the response. And this TS allows us to actually do that. So we'll go ahead and click on continue. And now we can test our action just to make sure it works. All right, seems like it actually works. And now we can go ahead and publish the application. Great, and now we can go into Slack to actually test it out. So let's go to ChatGPT channel right there. And let's post a message right in there. So let's say, um, tell me a story about AI. That's how original I can get. <laughs> All right, so tell me a story about AI. Let's see if our channel gets triggered and if we're gonna respond, get a response back. All right, so we can see our messages right in here. Um, let's ask the question like um, create a poem about the awesomeness of AI. So let's see what it does here. Um, because that's truly testing GPT-4. We can see the response here um, from the first question we asked earlier on. Uh, we can see a response regarding that particular question. And also when we kind of give it a, um, an actual question here, to create a poem, um, we can also see the response it provides as well. And we can see, so we can see the response here. So it treads the response and we can see it right here. It says, you know, it creates the poem that we're looking for. It's truly incredible to see what you can build with Zapier with no code at all, having the ability to replicate what ChatGPT does, but within your own Slack environment, that opens up a ton of opportunities because that means that you can build your own applications that do specific things. Over the course of the series, I'm going to be introducing different concepts and topics around how you can use Zapier to build really fully functional chatbots right inside Slack that do really powerful things that can really power some of your internal workflows to increase the efficiency of your organization. I think Zapier has built a really good platform that makes it much easier to assemble and build an application on Slack very quickly even if you don't know how to code. I hope to see what you are building so please comment below. Tell me what ideas you have about Slack AI applications you would love to build on Zapier. Also, let me know if you are running into any issues or if you're thinking about something that you'd like, love to build. I'd love to hear about them and try to help you out. If you really enjoy this type of content, please subscribe and also uh, leave me a like if you like the video. That obviously helps the YouTube algorithms just to make sure that the video gets to other folks who might be interested as well. Well, until next time, have a great one. Cheers.